Hi students, how are you? Good evening. Moharam wishes to Muslim friends. We will talk about important concepts of uh, strength of material as per gate as well ESC point of view. We will try to take the concepts through solving the questions. The critical questions we will take up and we will try to go through the things with problems, with uh, questions. So, the weightage is very good. We have discussed in our last video. Civil point of view gate 7 to 9 marks, ESC prelims 18 to 20 objectives, ESC mains point of view 40 to 100 plus marks in mains. Coming to the mechanical engineering 7 to 9 gate point of view, ESC prelims 10 to 15 objectives, good weightage, ESC mains 50 to 65 objectives. We will take the concept through questions for gate point of view as well ESC prelims point of view. Mains point of view, the lengthy questions we will solve later on. Gate point of view, calci is allowed, ESC prelims point of view, calci is not allowed. You need to do manual calculations. Even most of the questions of gate nowadays, if you observe, they are set in such a way that you can calculate easily without much of difficulty, without much of critical, uh, uh, what do you say, fractional answers and all. We will take up a simple question, a multiple choice question. This type of question may come in uh, ESC prelims or you can get in gate exam also, a multiple choice question. You have four choices you need to select best among all, the uh, correct answer among all. If you observe this, two copper bars and one brass bar, two copper, one brass, supports a rigid horizontal bar shown in figure. To keep the rigid horizontal bar, to keep the rigid bar horizontal, the force in the brass they are asking you. Central is the brass. On either side, copper and copper are there. It is symmetric. And uh, they are saying that this is the compatibility condition. The rigid bar must be horizontal even after the application of load. So, for that, what is the load coming on the brass? We need to take it. Actually speaking, to solve such questions, two unknowns are there. One is load acting on the copper and the other is load acting on the brass. Two unknowns to solve, we require two equations. One I can take uh, equilibrium equation and the other is compatibility condition. Compatibility or adjustment between the, uh, the bars is this condition. Rigid bar must be horizontal, this is rigid bar actually. The rigid bar must be horizontal before the application of load and during the application of load, even after the application of load, the rigid bar must be perfectly horizontal. So, first we will uh, take the equilibrium equation. The equilibrium equation says that sigma vertical force is equal to 0. So, the downward force is 20 kilo Newton he is taken by he is shared by two copper bars and one brass bar. So, the load taken by the two copper bars plus load taken by the brass bar will be equal to the total uh, 20 kilo Newton load. This is our equilibrium equation. The total load is shared by two copper, one brass. That uh, is obvious because no other support is there. Next, compatibility says that if you apply the load, this uh, rigid bar, initially it is horizontal. Say so, suppose this is the initial position of the uh, beam, the lower edge of the beam. After the application of load, it may go to some other position. That means, the initial level may come to here. As it is, it should come down. That is the compatibility, that is the adjustment condition given. The rigid bar must be horizontal even after the application of load. That says that the change in length of uh, any one copper bar, either this copper bar or this copper bar is equal to the change in length of brass bar. The change in length of brass bar is equal to change in length of any one copper bar. Say suppose this is a delta here, this copper bar is extending by delta, 
this should also extend by delta, this should also extend by delta. So, compatibility condition is equal to the change in length of uh, any one copper bar is equal to change in length of the brass bar. Change in length as you know P L upon A E that uh, P of copper length of copper is equal to L even this copper also L brass is also given as L all the bars are having equal length initially finally also they have equal length. So, initial length I am taking P L upon area of uh, copper is 2 A Young's modulus of uh, copper is 2 E even here also 2 A 2 E and for brass area is capital A Young's modulus is given as capital E only. So, here P L upon A area area of copper is 2 A and Young's modulus 2 E it is given for brass load is P B length is same as that of copper but the area is less it is only A, Young's modulus also less it is only E. Now, if you simplify what happens is everything L, L gets cancelled, A gets cancelled, E gets cancelled. So, P C will be equal to 2 into 2 4 times of P B. So, load carried by any one copper bar is equal to 4 times of the brass because copper is stronger, copper is having more Young's modulus and more area also. Now, substitute this relation in equation 1. So, in place of P C you substitute 4 P B. So, 2 P C is there this equation I am taking directly to here. In place of P C I will take uh, 4 P B plus P B is equal to 20 kilo Newton ok. So, 8 plus 1 9 P B is equal to 20 kilo Newton load taken by brass will be 20 by 9 almost 20 by 9 means if you take uh, that round to 10 is 0.2 less than 0.2 or uh, slightly more than 0.2 kilo Newton. If you look at the options this is 10 kilo Newton 20, 30, 40. Sometimes there may be a chance of such misleading of the answers. In such a case you cannot do anything the question will be the question will be uh, uh, in the ESC such complications may come into the picture. So, here no answer is matching, but however, to solve such questions you require equilibrium equation and one compatibility condition. So, this was a previous ESC question directly I am taking it. Now, coming to the next question. So, this is a composite setup determine the stress developed in bar A B they are asking bar A B. So, this is A B bar I want stress in this uh, A B bar in the composite assembly as shown in figure in mega Pascal I want. So, if you look at this this is one member another member another member at the end you have 20 kilo Newton of loading. So, here there is a hinge connection here there is a pin or hinge connection here and here and uh, there is a uh, sharp edge nothing but knife edge. So, this bar is hinged at one end knife edge and a point load is acting down. So, if you are pulling down with force here, here there is a chance of upward force, upward thrust coming into the picture at B. Even because of this 10 kilo Newton down there is upward thrust coming into the picture. If you want you can take the free body diagrams, I will take the free body diagram of this member, this member. So, this is our sharp edge or knife edge, you have a point load of uh, 10 kilo Newton here. So, this is 0.2 meter, this is 0.4 meter to this is action, the reaction here will be like this, 
this is load acting at C. Now, to find out the load acting at C, you can take the moment about this knife edge. So, P C into 0.4 is equal to on the other side 10 into 0.2. Now, P C will be you can take uh, shall I take like this 10 into 2 by 4 is uh, multiply with uh, 10 here, 10 here also. So, 2 1 ja, 2 2 ja, 10 by 2 is 5 kilo Newton. Is it correct? 20 by 4, 5 kilo Newton. Now, in the same way, the other member, I will take this member also, this member. So, this is a, a sharp edge here, knife edge here, this is 0.2 meter, this is 0.3 meter, this is 10 kilo Newton downwards and here also this is action, reaction here will be the P B reaction at B downwards, action, reaction as some, so this is something like a balance. Now, P B you can calculate in the same way. So, P B into point to this side is equal to 10 into point 3 other side. So, P B will be 10 into 3 by 2, 2 1 ja to 5 ja 15 kilo Newton. Okay, na? This uh, P B is 15 kilo Newton and P C is uh, 5 kilo Newton. As it is acting down, the reaction will act here in the opposite direction. So, if this is action here, so the reaction will act here in the opposite way. So, here the reaction will be how much? This is 15 upwards and here it is 5 upwards reaction on this member. Okay? So, this is action, this is reaction. If this is action, this is reaction here, 15 kilo Newton and this is 5 kilo Newton. Okay? So, this 15 kilo Newton is the thrust given by this horizontal bar here upwards and 5 kilo Newton is the thrust given by uh, this hinge reaction upwards. Now, they are asking you what is the stress developed in bar A B. If you want a stress in bar A B, we need to calculate the force acting on this member, force acting on A B. For force acting on A B, you take a section somewhere in A B and you take the resultant force either upside of the section or downside, the downside of the section. Upside there may be reaction, I do not know the reaction here. So, what I do is I will try to take the resultant force at this section by looking at the member below, below this section. So, 20 downward, 5 upward, 15 upwards. So, 20 down, 5 up, 15 up. So, 5 plus 15, 20 up and 20 down. So, at this section the net resultant force is 0. That means, the force in the member A B is 0. Once force in member A B is 0, what about the stress in the member? Obviously, the stress in the member is 0. So, answer is option A. Okay? So, su such a type of questions may come in our exam as a multiple choice question. So, to solve that, you require to have the concept of the free body diagrams. Everywhere we are taking the concept of the free body diagrams. So, they can ask you anything, they can ask you what is the stress in this member, stress in this member like that, whatever they want they can change and ask it. Okay? So, this is the question based upon the concept of free bodies mainly and the resultant force acting on the member. Coming to the next one. The three cubes, it is based upon the dimensional and volumetric changes of the member. 
based upon the generalized Newton's generalized Hooke's law. Now, you see here three cubes of equal size are held on rigid floor as shown in figure. So, the three cubes are placed on the floor touching to each other as shown in the figure. The expansion in the horizontal direction is prevented by the rigid, rigid supports. The expansion in the horizontal direction is prevented by the supports here and the supports here. That is what given to us. Determine the stress developed on the cube A in x direction. This is cube A. In x direction, what is the stress developed? We need to calculate. Mu is given as 0.3, Young's modulus is given as 200 giga Pascal. What do you need to do is here you take the again uh, concept of the free body diagrams, the three cubes, I will take the three cubes side by side, I will take in the next page. So, this is cube A, the front view I am showing, this is cube B, this is cube C, A, B, C all are resting on the rigid floor. On middle cube, there is a 10 mega Pascal of compressive stress. So, this is 10 mega Pascal of compressive stress is acting on the middle cube. Obviously, the reaction by the floor will be 10 mega Pascal. Because of this compression, it wanted to expand like this. But as the cube B is touching to A, the A will give you reaction for the expansion of B. Again, cube C also gives you a reaction for the expansion of B in x direction. Because of that, there may be the stress developed like this. So, cube B wanted to expand this way, but the stress developed in x direction is preventing that. x direction, the stress is preventing that. So, action reaction, action reaction, if this is action, here again reaction, this is opposite, action reaction must be same magnitude, but opposite in direction. So, this is also like this sigma x. Now, we need to find out the sigma x value, we need to find out the sigma x value. And uh, to find out the sigma x, we require one compatibility condition. Compatibility condition will come from the description given in the question. You can uh, uh, see the critical sentence here, the required sentence. The expansion in x direction, the expansion in horizontal x direction is uh, prevented by the rigid supports. That means, this support here is rigid, this support here is rigid. Say so, suppose cube size is small a, small a, small a, the distance between the two supports is 3 into small a before the application of this pressure. After the application of pressure also in the x direction, there is no change in the distance between the supports. That means, the total strain in x direction is 0. This cube b may expand or cube a may compress does not matter, but overall from this end to this end, the strain developed is 0. The strain in x direction of cube A plus strain in x direction of cube B, strain in x direction of cube C will be 0. There is no change in dimension upon original dimension, strain is 0. Now, you take individual strain in this direction, x direction on cube A. It is having only uniaxial stress. So, compression if I take minus, minus sigma x by E is the strain in x direction on the cube A, because only sigma x is there. Now, coming to cube B, I want the strain in x direction. In x direction, the strain is uh, sigma x as it is compression, I am taking minus. And uh, y direction st uh, stress is also there, we need to use generalized Hooke's law. So, sigma x by e minus mu times the lateral strain we need to consider. So, minus mu times of 
even uh, that uh, y direction is also compression that is why minus 10 upon e and uh, the third one is directly compression minus sigma x by e is equal to 0. No need that you need to take uh, compression as negative, you, if you want you can take compression as positive also, so that everywhere you can use plus everywhere. So, e gets cancelled because on the right hand side it is 0. So, if you simplify it will be, so minus sigma x, so here also minus sigma x, minus of minus is plus, mu is 0.3 given, so 0.3 into 10 and minus sigma x is equal to 0. So, minus sigma x minus sigma x minus sigma x is minus 3 sigma x plus uh, 0.3 into 10 is 3 is equal to 0. Now, sigma x is this if you take on to the other side 1 mega Pascal. So, this is the stress acting on the cube A in x direction not only cube A, cube B also in x direction same value, cube C also you have the same uh, stress in x direction. So, answer is option B. Without calculator also you can uh, simplify, usually they are giving you data in such a way that you can simplify without calculator. Now, we will move to the next question. Next question is uh, uh, based upon the member beam member, they are asking you the bending moment shear force and uh, axial force on the member. So, this is based upon the concept of SFD BMD. Look at the question please, a bar of uniform flexural rigidity is hinged at the ends and loaded as shown in the figure. Which of the following statements is correct among the statements given below? It is a multiple select question. Multiple select question means such a questions will come in gate exam where there is more than one option correct for us. There may be a chance of one correct option, two correct options, three correct options are all correct options. So, it is a multiple select question and uh, in ESC prelims point of view all are multiple choice questions, in gate point of view you have multiple select questions. For multiple select questions, no negative marking if you are picking up the wrong answer. That is the advantage, blessing in disguise. So, this is a member and there is a projection here. Over the projection, 10 kilo Newton load is added. And you transfer this point load to here and that becomes axial force along with, the, if you transfer axial force not into the line of action if you are transferring to another line of action, there will be movement also coming into the picture uh, apart from the axial force. I will try to make use of the next page. So, this is the member, hinge and hinge, both are hinges, you see both are hinges and uh, 2 meter, 3 meter, this is 2 meter, this is 3 meter and you have axial force here at the, the end of 2 meter and moment also comes into the picture. So, axial force is axial force is 10 kilo Newton, moment is 10 into 1, 10 into 1 is 10 kilo Newton meter. So, if you look at the options, the design axial force in the bar they are asking you, design bending moment, design shear force they are asking. Also, so design axial force, bending and shear. Option D is also with the design axial force with a different value. Here 10 kilo Newton given, here 6 kilo Newton given. So, there may be chance of 3 correct options because this is also axial force, this is also axial force. If this is correct, this is wrong. If this is correct, this is wrong. L let us see what is happening here. I will go by shortcut procedure, if you are applying a point load here with uh, eccentric point load, the reaction here will be P into, P is the 10 kilo Newton into opposite side length 2 meter divided by total length. 
3 plus 2 is 5. So, this axial force will be acting in the opposite direction to the applied force. Applied force is down, reactions are upwards. So, again this is 10 kilo Newton, opposite uh, part length 3 divided by total 5. So, this is uh, 10 by 5 is uh, 2, 2 into 3 is 6 kilo Newton and uh, 10 by 5 is uh, 2, 2 into 2 is 4 kilo Newton. That means, up to from here to here, say if I distinguish mark it as A B C, A B part is subjected to axial force of 6 kilo Newton, B C part is subjected to look down a force of 4 kilo Newton. So, B C part is subjected to axial force of 4 and uh, A B is subjected to 6 kilo Newton of axial force. So, 10 kilo Newton is shared 6 and 4 like that. So, design axial force is maximum of the 2 values, nothing but 6 kilo Newton. I think uh, we can uh, have one correct option. So, design axial force is 6 kilo Newton, this is correct. So, this is wrong, option D is wrong, option A is correct. Option B says design bending moment, option C is talking about sh design shear force. We will calculate the design shear force. Say shear force is because of uh, the couple, axial force is not creating uh, shear and bending, the couple is creating the uh, shear and bending. As this is clockwise couple, as it is clockwise couple, the reactions will uh, cause anti-clockwise couple. The reactions will cause anti-clockwise couple like this. So, applied moment is clockwise, the reaction developed is anti-clockwise. The total moment is m, the couple created by the reactions will also be m, nothing but 10 kilo Newton meter. So, each reaction will be m by length between the two reactions, m is 10, length between the two reactions is 5, nothing but 10 by 5 is 2 kilo Newton. 2 kilo Newton is the reaction here towards right side. Here also same net moment by distance between the two reactions. Net moment is 10, distance between the two reactions is 5, 3 plus 2 is 5. So, this is also 2 kilo Newton of reaction. So, this is this way, this is this way. So, maximum shear force is nothing but maximum reaction, nothing but 2 kilo Newton. 2 kilo Newton is the maximum shear force in this member. Action balancing reaction. So, design shear force is 2 kilo Newton. Uh, any option matching here? Design shear force of the bar is 2 kilo Newton. That means option C is also correct. Now, we will check up the bending moment in the beam. Design bending moment is maximum most possible bending moment developed in the beam. Let us see. I will take uh, AB zone. I will take AB zone. So, here the bending moment is 0, 2 into 0 distance. By the time you reach to the B, the bending moment will be 2 into 2, 4 kilo Newton meter. And uh, if you look from the bottom, the bending moment here is 2 into 3. 2 into 3 is 6 kilo Newton meter. So, 2 into 3 is creating higher moment compared to 2 into 2. So, the design moment is 2 into 3. 2 into 3 is design bending moment, 6 kilo Newton meter. Let us see whether option is correct or not. You see, design bending moment in the beam is 6 kilo Newton meter. Standard cases, you might have come across this standard cases are so many times, but uh, together they are asking you. So, answer is, answer A is correct, B is correct, C is also correct. So, three options are there. Nobody will ask you to draw the bending moment, shear force and uh, axial force diagrams. But however, if you want axial force diagram, so this part is under tension, this part is under compression, compression and this part is under tension. So, up to the point B, axial force of uh, tension 6 kilo Newton here, tension if I take positive, on the other side it will be negative, 4 kilo Newton. This is axial force diagram, 
nobody will ask you to draw no need to practice it also only for information i am giving you now coming to the shear force diagram shear force diagram is a dabba the same constant shear force is acting you see the shear force above my hand is 2 kN 2 kN till here 2 kN so it's a dabba of 2 kN this is shear force diagram same magnitude throughout the length of the member now coming to the bending moment so this side 2 into 3 6 6 kN meter may be acting here on the other side on the other side this way this way it is bending like this tension coming on the other side Ten tension coming on the right side so uh, this is 2 into 2 4 kN meter that will be like this so this is 4 bending moment diagram this is 6 kilo newton meter this is bmd maximum most bending moment is the design bending moment is 6 kilo newton meter shear force is constant so 2 kilo newton is uh, design shear force and uh, design axial force is 6 kilo newton magnitude only will take so this is uh, tension this is compression actually plus is uh, taking tension this is compression generally we will take the magnitude of the force for the design higher magnitude of the force for the design and uh, here it is giving you tension right side so in this case tension right on the bc part tension left side okay diagrams are not required only for information i am giving you next coming to the another question related to beams only with the hinges the beam seems to be bionic but actually it is very simple only it is a numerical answer question numerical answer question uh, is a common question in case of gate exam see what's given here a prismatic beam of uniform square section of uh, 100 mm square is uh, loaded as shown in figure the principal stress developed in the beam at the top fiber of the fixed end the principal stress at the top fiber of the fixed end this is only the fixed end hinge hinge this also end hinge they are asking you principal stress to find out the principal stress on the top fiber we need to calculate usually on the top fiber bending stress will be there on a top fiber shear is zero flexural shear is zero so no need to calculate the shear force at this fixed end a you calculate bending moment at the fixed end a so for that divide and rule policy we use divide and rule policy the free body diagrams will take so coming to the i'll take this as a b c d i'll separate c d i'll take the next page cd means this is a hinge gives you assume that vertical loading is there so vertical reaction only will come at the hinge 10 kilo newton 10 kilo newton equal spacing everywhere so 10 kilo newton 10 kilo newton equal spacing of 2 to 2 meter so each reaction is also 10 kilo newton just by symmetry you can use it and uh, take the free body of this inclined member 2 meter 2 meter means it is a 45 degree inclined member this inclined member uh, is not having any force on this once it is not having any force and this is a hinge this is a hinge this is a axial force member usually axial tension may be there in this member because this load is transferring onto this is a axially loaded member bc and uh, axial tension may be there i am showing the axial tension like this no need to calculate axial tension i want only the vertical component of the force as it is upward there may be downward force here of 10 kilo newton and a horizontal reaction i don't want there may be as it is uh, downward may be upward 10 kilo newton will be there here 10 10 10 and uh, that will transfer onto this beam this cantilever beam fixed at one end fixed at one end will have uh, is a cantilever beam it is having udl completely 
six kilo newton per meter. This is a load acting on it. As uh, this reaction is upward, what Newton said, there will be downward reaction of ten kilo newton here. It is all action, reaction, action, reaction. Once you are uh, thorough with free body diagrams, almost eighty percent of your work is done. So this is reaction here upward to balance that downward, upward, downward. Now I want bending moment at the fixed end A. If you want bending moment at fixed end A, it is a hugging moment only. What is the length given to us? 3 meter, 10 into 3 plus because uh, both are in the same direction giving you hugging moment, 6 into 3 into 3 by 2. 6, uh, 3, 1, ja, 3, 2, 2 into 3 is 6, 18, 30, 6 into 3 into 3 by 2, 18. So, 30 plus 18 is 48 kilo newton meter. They are asking you principal stress on the top fiber of the fixed support A. What is the cross section given? It is the square cross section of 100 mm. So, the fixed end, the cross section is 100 by 100 mm. It may be subjected to bending moment plus shear force. Bending moment gives you bending stress. It is a linear like this at extreme fibers uh, uh, maximum because of symmetry and this is a flexural shear. As flexural shear is 0 on the top fiber, only the bending stress will take it and that bending stress alone will be creating uh, hugging. Na? Hugging means top fiber under tension. So, top fiber, if you take an element on the top fiber, it is under tension. S is equal to m by z. m is 48 kilo Newton meter convert into Newton mm. z is b d square by 6, 100 into 100 square by 6, 100, 2 zeros, 4 zeros, 6 zeros. So, 10 power 6, this and this gone. So, 48 into 6. Right? Check up please. 6 into 8. 48. 288. Huh? So, 288 mega Pascal. Is it correct? Please check up. I am poor in calculations, please check it up once. Okay? So, this is the answer, numerical answer. They are asking you round to the nearest integer. Okay, please? This is the procedure, this is the way we need to solve it. So, they have given a beam from the concept of free body and bending moment and shear force, we need to calculate the bending moment here and then at the extreme top fiber bending tension will be there and uh, shear is 0. So, the principal stress, a member subjected to uniaxial stress, principal stress itself that F maximum stress is equal to this. Sigma 1 itself, the major principal stress itself the same. Okay? Please check up the calculations once. Is it right? We will move to the next question. Let us check up whether it is correct or not. Okay. Next, come to multiple choice question. Which of the following shear force diagram is true for the loaded beam shown in figure? They have given the beam and they have given four shear force diagrams. We need to select which is the correct option. 
drawing the shear force diagram for this beam, finding out the reactions and then drawing the shear force diagram and then comparing with the answer is a big joke here. So, what do you need to do is just by process of elimination you need to pick up the answer. That way you can select the answer. This may be an objective question of ESC also, ESC prelims. Once you have the concept, making use of the uh, concept to pick up the right option is required here. So, such a uh, idea will come if you have good practice on the questions. That is why I told you just have little fundamentals and practice more and more on the numerical questions. That is what required here. Let us see. So, this is the beam, there is a vertical reaction, vertical reaction mentioned, there is a UDL. Wherever there is a linear uh, loading, there should be parabola, okay, in all uh, the cases is a parabola here uh, in this zone. And uh, as there is no variation of load, there is no variation of load here to here, the shear force diagram should be dabba. Dabba means uniform. And here to here also shear force diagram is dabba. Here to here also shear force diagram is dabba, nothing but uniform. So, here shear force diagram is linear. So, this option is ruled out. Here also shear force diagram is linear, ruled out. But here it is uniform. Actually, there is no load acting here. The shear force diagram should be uniform here. Here also uniform, here also uniform required. Now, look at the next one. So, here shear force is uniform. We will we'll try to eliminate. Uniform here, uniform here, uniform here. So, uniform here, uniform here, uniform here. Uniform, uniform, uniform. Uniform, uniform, uniform. You cannot uh, eliminate by uniformity. Now, coming to the parabolic zone. So, wherever UVL is there, there is a parabola. So, here intensity of the load is uh, 0. That means, we know this concept df by dx is equal to rate of loading. Rate of change of shear force is equal to rate of loading. df by dx we call it a slope of shear force diagram. Slope of shear force diagram. Slope of shear force diagram is equal to the rate of loading. So, if rate of loading is 0 here, the slope, slope is nothing but angle with uh, horizontal. If rate of loading is 0, the slope is 0, nothing but angle of the line with horizontal is 0, angle of the uh, diagram with the uh, horizontal is 0. So, if you look at this uh, four cases, rate of loading is 0, here the slope is 0. So, this is okay. Rate of loading is 0, but here you have high slope. High slope means this is wrong. Again, rate of loading is 0 here. You see, the slope is there, slope is slight slope is going on. Now, next, rate of loading is 0, here the slope is 0, it is almost tangential. So, this is ruled out, either this or this will come into the picture. Next, coming to this one, here high rate of loading, 60 kilo Newton meter is rate of loading. So, high slope here. Okay, high slope here. And here you see zero slope. Zero slope means high rate of loading, zero slope, gone. High rate of loading, high slope, it is also okay. But here you have little slope, this is ruled out. And here zero slope. High rate of loading, zero slope, this is also gone. This is gone, this is gone, this is gone. You have Which one? So, this is wrong, this is wrong. So, here slight slope is there actually speaking. Slight slope it is uh, uh, mentioned there actually speaking, this is ruled out. This is ruled out means do not see this, completely ruled out, completely ruled out. This is also completely rolled out. This is also zero slope here, but high rate of loading. This is also rolled out here. The only option available with us is 
this is the right option. So, uniform again we will check it dabba, 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 zero rate of loading, zero slope slightly it is increasing and here high slope, high rate of loading. So, only option available with us is option C. So, by process of elimination, you can pick up the answer. Okay? By process of elimination, you can pick it up the answer. Zero rate of loading, zero slope. High rate of loading, high slope. Answer is option C. This may be possible as a multiple choice question in ESC prelims also. Coming to the next question. It is a multiple choice question. Again, the deflections, it is related to deflection. Deflection at the free end of the beam shown in figure. Free end of the beam, they are asking you to find out. In the multiple choice question, this length is A, this length also A and EI is constant given. So, you can go by any of the methods. I will try to use uh, conjugate beam method. Conjugate beam method is a better choice for us. So, for ca calculating uh, the deflection at the free end by conjugate beam method, first of all you need to uh, take the bending moment diagram. Once you know the bending moment diagram, you can make it as a m by e i diagram as e i is constant. So, m by e i diagram will be very similar to BMD. And uh, based upon the concept of the conjugate beam, if you want deflection at a point in the original beam, which is equal to bending moment on the conjugate beam. If you want slope at a particular point on the original beam, which is equal to shear force on the conjugate beam, that you know. So, for uh, drawing the bending moment diagram, no need to go from the fundamentals. No need to go by calculation of reactions and all. So, what best you can do is, the beam is hugging everywhere. So, P into A is the hugging moment, uh, which is coming at here. So, bending moment here is 0. Even uh, hinge bending moment here is 0. So, the bending moment diagram will be something like a triangle, just a triangle with the peak at the support, middle support, the roller support here. So, this is P into A. This is our BMD. Even if you draw the elastic curve of the beam, the beam deflects down like this, it goes like this, it is hogging everywhere. Hugging means tension on the top. Now, this is our BMD. I go for the conjugate beam. The conjugate beam will be, so this is BMD. Make this ordinate as M by EI diagram divided with EI. So, this is P into A by EI. Now, we will uh, make the beam. Free end becomes fixed. Intermediate support becomes internal hinge, end hinge becomes hinge only. So, end hinge will be hinge only, intermediate support becomes internal hinge, the free end becomes fixed end. So, if it is ABC on the conjugate beam also, this is ABC. This is a conjugate beam with conjugate beam with M by EI diagram. This is a conjugate beam loaded with M by A diagram. This is triangle, this is also triangle. As it is internal hinge, if you have the internal hinge, to analyze the beam with internal hinge, better you divide into parts. So, I will try to divide this into two parts. This is a uh, cantilever with uh, UVL like this. Next is the right side. This is actually the hinge and it is a triangular loading here. To support the triangular loading, this is P A by E i, this is also P A by E i. Okay? Like this. So, this is unstable, we need to give reaction. This uh, B C part is unstable, we need to give reaction. How do you give reaction? So, you need to give upward reaction here. As it is upward, here on this member downward reaction will come into the picture. If it is R B upward here, here it is R B downward here. If you join this and this together, 
this uh, downward reaction, this upward reaction will uh, cancel each other. Now, uh, this is something like a beam with UVL and uh, length is A, length is A, A na? this is also A, this is also A, length is A, RB will be, if you have uh, a beam with UVL, intensity W, so this reaction will be higher, WL by 3, WL by 6, you remember. So, this will be WL by 3, W is PA by uh, EI. So, RB will be directly I am giving you WL by 3, W is PA by EI. Okay, okay, okay. Simplify that. W is P A by E I, L is A by 3. So, P A square by 3 I is the reaction. This is R B. Once you know R B, forget about this beam, come to this beam. Now, they are asking you deflection at the free end. Deflection at the free end of the real beam. is equal to bending moment at the uh, fixed end of the same conjugate beam after conversion. So, bending moment at A of the conjugate beam span is A. So, R B into A, hugging moment it is giving you, hugging moment I am taking positive. Even this triangular load will be creating the hugging moment, the triangular load is also half into PA by EI is the load into distances from the centroid to here, it is two third, two third of A. So, RB you can substitute and then simplify, you will get the deflection. PA cube by 3 E i, this is a P a cube by 2 2 gets cancelled, is it correct? Half into base into height, yes 2 third of a, 2 2 gets cancelled. So, 2 P A square by 3 E I. Is it correct? A cube by 3 I. Any answer matching? Let us see. 2 P A cube by 3 I. Answer is option B. So, like that even you can use strain energy method to find out the deflection at the free end. You try the same beam by using the strain energy approach, a given conjugate beam approach. Okay? Takes time, this may be a question in gate exam, try this question, is a complex stresses question. Calculate the shear stress tau x y. on the triangular element with the stresses as shown in figure. This is tau x y they are asking you to calculate. The tau x y value they are asking you to calculate. A is constant, A is not required actually. So, this is a triangular 60, 60, 60 angle means equilateral triangle. And uh, before we go to the uh, solving of this problem, you know that if this is a, a standard element, sigma x, this is sigma y, this is an inclined plane we have taken, theta, the normal stress on this inclined plane is sigma theta, shear downwards is tau theta. If you want stresses on the inclined plane sigma theta, 
and shear is also there on this. I am taking clockwise shear on the horizontal plane as positive. This is tau x y to balance that anti clockwise shear should be there on the vertical plane. This is the standard element. So, sigma theta as you know after derivation most of the people by hearted this equation cos 2 theta plus tau x y sin 2 theta. Remember this even uh, tau theta uh, you can calculate by this is not required actually sigma x minus sigma y by 2 sin 2 theta minus tau x y cos 2 theta. I want this only. So, remember here sigma x is tensile, sigma y also tensile and uh, the inclined plane is making an angle of theta with the vertical in the clockwise direction. Angle with vertical in clockwise direction I have taken, in anti clockwise direction I have taken positive. Angle with vertical in anti clockwise direction I have taken positive while deriving this formula. Now, we will go back to this uh, question. So, I will I'll divide this into two parts. I will divide this into two triangles. I will uh, take this uh, triangular piece, this uh, triangular piece, this uh, triangular piece, this triangular piece and uh, this uh, triangular piece will be similar, you see. The theta here taken with respect to vertical in anti clockwise direction, here also in this triangular piece angle is taken with vertical in the anti clockwise direction, it is not 60, it is 30 degrees. Okay? And if you take uh, the other way, if it is plus 30, this is minus 30 will come into the picture. Now, this is an inclined plane, the stresses on the inclined plane, normal stress is known to us, the shear stress on the inclined plane is not given. Even minus 30 angle if you take, this is another inclined plane. On this inclined plane, normal stress is given to us as uh, 100 mega Pascal, shear is not known. And in y direction, normal stress is 80 mega Pascal and shear I do not know. They are asking you to find out the tau x y. So, I will take uh, this triangular part, this triangular part, the right side triangular part, that means this triangular part. For this, theta is equal to 30 degrees. Then uh, sigma 30 degrees will be equal to sigma x is not known to us. Sigma x is on vertical plane, vertical plane itself not given here. So, sigma x is not known to us, but sigma y is 80 mega Pascal tensile. So, sigma x plus sigma y by 2. Next, uh, sigma x is unknown minus sigma y by 2 cos. 2 into theta, 2 into 30 degrees plus uh, tau x y is also unknown, this tau x y is unknown sin 2 into 30. So, this will be uh, sigma 30 is given as sigma 30 is given as 60 mega Pascal is equal to sigma x plus 80 by 2 sigma x minus 80 by 2 sin uh, cos 60 1 by 2 cos 60 is 1 by 2 plus uh, tau x y sin 60 0.833 I will take. This is one equation. Okay. Now, I will uh, take this triangle, this triangle. This is also an inclined plane, but uh, angle is with vertical taken in the clockwise direction. Angle with vertical in anti clockwise direction, I am taking it positive. Angle with vertical in the clockwise direction, I will take negative. So, this becomes, this becomes sigma minus 30 degrees normal stress on the 30 degree plane, minus 30 degree plane is 100 mega Pascal. Again, sigma x unknown, sigma y is 80 by 2, sigma y on the standard element is 80 plus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 
cos 2 into minus 30, angle is minus 30, 2 into minus 30 is cos of uh, 2 into minus 30 is uh, half only, cos of minus theta is theta only plus uh, tau x y is unknown for us sin 2 into minus 30. So, cos of uh, sin of uh, minus 60 is minus 0.87, minus 0.84, 833 nothing but 84, this is 100, 87 na, 87. Eight seven. In the previous equation, also this is eight seven. So this is equation two. Here uh, sigma x plus eighty by two minus eighty by two half minus will come out point eight seven equation 2. Equation 1 and equation 2, we simplify and find out sigma x. So, this is 60, sigma x plus 80 by 2, equation 1 I am writing half, this is plus tau x y, equation 1 better we add, add 1 and 2, 100 plus 60, 160, half plus half, full. Here, uh, half I will take outside, Y2 will come. This cancels. So, from this calculate sigma x. So, 80 plus 80 minus 40 is 40. Sigma plus sigma by 2, uh, 2 1 2, 3 by 2 sigma x. So, sigma x is 140, 160 minus 40 is 120 into 2 by 3, 40, 80 mega Pascal, yeah. one twenty into 2 by 3 is 80 mega Pascal, sigma x is known, substitute sigma x in equation 1. Then uh, 60 plus 80 plus 80 by 2, 160 by 2 is 80, Six, sorry. 60 is equal to 80, 80 plus 80 by 2 is 160 by 2 is 80, this is 0 and uh, tau x y into 0 0.87. Tau x y you can calculate, maybe minus will come 30 opposite to the given direction, but uh, is a multiple choice question, let us see what are the option they have given. Twenty three actually, not thirty, this is twenty three. So, nearest option is avoid the sign, nearest answer is 23, actually 22 point something will come if you calculate. So, this way slightly uh, what do you say lengthy question may come 
such questions may come in gate exam, maybe a two marks question. So, they will give you uh, the data in such a way that you can calculate the things without calculator also. So, these are the simple questions we have taken to have the clarity on the fundamentals. So, for exam, if you want to get good concepts, what do you need to do is solve more and more number of problems. Solving the problems will give you clarity on the concept. So, do not uh, unnecessarily read so many textbooks, different, different author textbooks and waste your time. So, my suggestion is solve the problems, you get the confidence while getting solving the problems and while getting the answers with that. So, with this I will close the session. I wish you all the best. We will meet again in some other session. Thank you. Just another,